Old stone houses are beautiful, but let's face it, they can be cold to live in, especially during the winter time. Now, we can insulate our stone walls on the exterior of the assembly or on the interior, with exterior rigid insulation providing the highest levels of thermal performance, energy efficiency, and moisture safety. However, oftentimes the appearance of the exterior stone walls has to be preserved for either aesthetic reasons or historical preservation, necessitating an interior insulation strategy. When insulating stone walls on the interior, bulk water management and moisture must be prioritized, as the addition of insulation slows the flow of heat through the stone wall and reduces the drying potential, which can impact the durability and structural integrity of the wall assembly. Condensation on the interior face of the stone walls must also be prevented, as the improper use of vapor permeable insulation can lead to interstitial moisture issues during the winter time, while the use of vapor impermeable insulation can trap moisture. In this video, we're talking about how to safely insulate your old stone walls from the interior. Let's get into it. So, stone walls are considered to be a type of mass wall assembly. Just as a reminder, a mass wall has the ability to absorb, store, and redistribute water as a means of moisture control, and it's been widely used historically to address rainwater penetration. Stone houses and stone buildings typically need to be insulated if they are to be inhabited, as stone walls are considered to be a thermal mass that stores heat. Heat always moves from the warm side of the wall to the cold side, meaning that poorly insulated stone walls are always sucking heat out of the building if you're in a heating-dominated climate. Typically, the thermal resistance of stone walls is about R0.25, so a solid stone wall that was 24 inches thick would be R6 at best. Insulating these older stone walls will reduce energy consumption and ensure that money isn't being flushed down the drain. However, it must be acknowledged that energy efficiency comes with a penalty. Heat flow is what helped these old buildings dry out if they got wet, as heat or energy is required for drying to occur. Embedded wood components are at a high risk of rot if the building is not adequately water managed, as the embedded ends stay wetter and colder for a longer period of time. We've actually discussed this at length in this video, which we'll link up here. So, if the stone walls can't be insulated on the exterior of the assembly, one viable interior insulation strategy is to use a combination of mineral wool insulation and a smart vapor retarder membrane to allow the stone walls to dry out to the interior if they get wet, while preventing interior vapor from condensing on the cold stone wall. Smart vapor retarder membranes are vapor variable and increase in permeability as relative humidity increases. If the relative humidity within the wall cavity exceeds 60%, the membrane will begin to allow vapor to pass through, unlike a standard vapor barrier, which traps moisture and has resulted in a lot of mold and rot damage in similar assemblies. More importantly though, the smart vapor retarder membrane is serving as the air barrier. Now, let's preface this by saying that we are assuming that you are doing everything right on the exterior and that there are no concentrations of bulk water draining on the surface of that masonry. Examples of this would be leaky gutters or downspouts or poorly drained windowsills that concentrate water around certain portions of the wall. So first, the exterior of the stone walls are coated in either a clear penetrating sealer or a highly vapor permeable and hydrophobic paint to reduce the amount of water absorbed by the stone and the mortar joints. Mineral silicate paints, such as those by Keim, bond to the surface of the stone and span over small cracks in the stone, while penetrating sealers like silanes and siloxanes will retain the original appearance of the stone walls, but only provide water repellent properties to the stone and mortar. It cannot span over cracks and gaps. The goal here is to reduce surface water absorption into the stone wall. If we reduce the drying potential, we have to reduce the wetting potential. After the exterior walls have been painted or treated, the interior side of the stone walls should be assessed for cracks and general damage. If the walls are in good condition, a fluid applied or cementitious waterproofing can be installed directly over the stone. This will prevent any water that happens to wick through small cracks via capillarity from leaking into the framed wall cavity. We want this fluid applied coating to be vapor open, as this will ensure that the stone walls can adequately dry to the interior if needed. If there are many gaps and cracks on the interior face of the wall, a lime cement parge coat is recommended to repair and seal large openings before the installation of the liquid applied membrane. It's extremely important that this parge coat utilizes a traditional lime cement mortar and not a Portland cement or polymer modified product, as these parging materials tend to have lower permeability and are stronger than historic lime mortars. Old lime mortars must have the ability to dry out to retain their durability. After the interior face of the stone walls has been waterproofed, rigid mineral wool insulation is installed to provide a continuous thermal break between the new framed interior walls, significantly improving the efficiency of the assembly since the wood framing is uncoupled from the cold stone. 
Mineral wool insulation is also air and vapor permeable, allowing the stone walls to dry to the interior if necessary. Next, the framed walls can be installed along with optional mineral bats between the studs if a higher level of thermal resistance is desired. Keep in mind that the walls should not be over-insulated in cold climates, as the stone walls still require heat flow to dry out and to reduce the effects of freeze-thaw damage that causes spalling. If there is an abundance of moisture present within the stone walls during freezing temperatures, freeze-thaw damage can occur, in which the water within the stone wall freezes, leaving behind concentrations of salts, which result in efflorescence and spalling. After the walls have been insulated with mineral wool, we need to install a taped smart vapor retarder membrane to prevent wintertime condensation while allowing the stone walls to dry to the interior. As we mentioned before, a smart vapor retarder serves not only as the primary form of condensation control, but also as the primary air barrier in the assembly, necessitating that the seams, joints, and penetrations are taped with a high quality air sealing tape to prevent moisture from being deposited into the walls through air leakage into the cavity that could potentially result in interstitial condensation and convective loops. The benefit of a smart vapor retarder membrane is that it allows us to use a wider range of insulation types without having to resort to rigid foam or spray foam insulation, helping to reduce costs and allowing for more flexibility in the design. Now recently Rockwool came out with a new product called Smart Rock that has a smart vapor retarder membrane bonded to their rigid product. That product eliminates the added steps quite a bit. Next, 2x3 horizontal strapping is fastened to the studs through the smart vapor retarder membrane to provide an airtight service cavity for electrical conduit, plumbing, and other services. Now, we often get the question, what about all the fastener penetrations in the membrane? And to quickly address that, if the fasteners are buried in wood, they aren't a problem. However, if you end up removing fasteners, you need to patch over the hole. This can also be combined with airtight enclosure boxes that can be taped directly to the smart vapor retarder membrane. The 2x3 strapping will also serve as a fastening base for the drywall or interior finishes. This strategy allows the stone walls to continue functioning as a mass wall while providing a moisture safe insulation strategy. The stone walls can also be treated as a drained wall assembly if the walls can't be insulated on the exterior and if there are concerns about water ingress. This strategy uncouples the cold, wet stone walls from the interior framing and insulation with a taped dimple mat membrane, providing a drainage space and air gap that allows the existing stone walls to dry, ensuring that water won't be sucked inside or trapped in the framed wall assembly. The strategy also allows us to use almost any type of insulation, whether it's taped rigid foam, spray foam, bat, or blown-in insulation with a smart vapor retarder without the moisture risks associated with applying it directly to the stone walls. So we fasten this dimple mat membrane to the interior side of the stone walls and down to a new foundation drainage tile, which should discharge to daylight or a series of sump pumps. This ensures that any water that leaks behind the stone walls, and presumably the stone foundation, will have the ability to drain out and away from the building. We don't want water getting trapped at the bottom of the dimple mat, since this water needs to be discharged somewhere. All of the seams and joints of the dimple mat are taped to prevent moisture flow to the interior through air leakage or vapor pressure. We are almost treating that stone wall as a veneer wall, even though it technically isn't. After the dimple mat is installed and taped, the walls can be insulated with almost any insulation strategy desired since the stone walls are uncoupled from the framing. You could specify taped rigid foam insulation, such as EPS or XPS, to insulate behind the dimple mat layer and to provide an air barrier and vapor retarder to prevent condensation. This strategy is a little bit more difficult and labor intensive since all of the joints will need to be taped and integrated into the other components of the assembly, but it is slightly easier than using a taped smart vapor retarder membrane. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to more weekly building science videos and head over to our website at asiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.